A motion diagram is yet another way to represent the motion of an object. For me, the easiest way to deal with translating between a position time graph and a velocity time graph, an acceleration time graph, a velocity time graph, is to remember the, the is to remember that when you're dealing with them, velocity at any point in time is the same as the slope of the tangent at that same time on the position time curve. The acceleration at any point in time is the same thing as the slope of the tangent at that time on the position time curve. Now that sounds like a lot of words jumbled together. So let's take a look at the actual graphs. I always start with the position time curve. Now let's say you have a ladybug. Okay, and you take that ladybug, she's a pet ladybug, she's okay. Um, you take that ladybug and you gently toss that ladybug into the air. Okay, so the ladybug is going to travel up. She's going to get to her maximum point right here and then as we all know once that ladybug gets to her maximum point up up there she is then going to come back down so she travels up and then she comes right back down now that ladybug we can represent her position time curve now when I am working with time graphs the very first thing I do is sketch the position time graph or I look at the position time curve and I plot it at the very top. So this is going to be the change in y position over time. Now my students, the most confusing thing uh, for them is that ever since you were in elementary school, when you have a graph, usually this part of the graph represents x and this part of the graph represents y. So when I tell you, when I show you that the position of this ladybug, uh, let's see, we're just going to call this position where we're starting to chuck that ladybug, I mean gently toss that ladybug, is going to be y equals 0 and then positive y is going to be in the upward direction. So she's going to start out at zero and then her maximum velocity of course is going to be right as she leaves our hand. She's going to come up to a peak and let me just move this so you can see. Okay and it will look about like this. For my bad sketching ability that's what it's going to look like. Now in order to understand her velocity graphically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a velocity time curve directly underneath my position time curve. So this is going to be my velocity over time. And before I try to sketch it, I'm going to put in time markers and so I'm going to say, okay, where does her position, where does her motion really change? And I can see here that here she's going up, 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 and right here is where she starts going down. So right at that transition point, I am just going to put a dotted line all the way down. And <laughs> theoretically, this should be relatively uh, straight. I'm going to put it all the way down my dotted line and every point in time on the the position graph should be the same as the velocity graph should be the same as the acceleration curve and I'll do the acceleration curve in just a bit I'll draw that down here you're probably not going to be able to see it yet so using what I remember what I recalled earlier was that on the position curve at any moment in time whatever the slope is at that tangent at that particular moment that's going to be what the velocity is now in this particular case we don't have any numbers we're just representing that motion just understanding what the shape of those curves would be so the slope from here all the way up 
until the first moment in time where I say that motion is changing. The slope, I ask myself, is it positive, negative, or zero? Well, if I was a little hiker man walking on this curve, okay, just like when you were little and you learned about slope, uh, if I was a little hiker man, I would say, yeah, it's definitely positive. I am getting woo, winded walking up this hill. And once you know it's positive, you know that my velocity curve from this moment to this moment is going to be above zero. The other question I ask myself is, okay, well, it's positive. I know that. But what else is happening as I'm walking along? Is this positive slope increasing, decreasing, or is it staying the same? Well, the slope is definitely changing because it's a curved line. And as I'm walking, if I was a little hiker, I'm kind of getting excited because it's leveling off, which means the slope goes from something that's very positive. So initially, well, I should say initially the curve looks like this. So initially it would, uh, your velocity is zero. You haven't yet thrown that poor little ladybug. And I forgot, we should mark, this is a timestamp too. I forgot about this little section right in here. Her motion, motion is definitely changing at this moment right here. Okay, so because her position was staying the same and then all of a sudden somebody took her out of her happy little world and chucked her up into the air. Uh, she's your pet. She loves you. She's just kidding. Okay, now here your motion is completely the same. Your zero slope from here to here. If your slope is zero, your velocity is zero. And let me just get a different color. I'll get, uh, let's say, green. All right, so your motion, your slope is zero from here to here, so your velocity is zero from there to there. Now we're going to look at the time section between these two red dotted lines. Well, as I was saying before, once you get out of the gate right here, you have a very, very high positive slope, so you're going to have a very high positive velocity. They're the same thing. And up here, you notice as you approach this timestamp, your slope is getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it gets to that maximum point. And at that maximum point, your slope is zero. So your slope from this moment to this moment is going to decrease. And it looks like I have a curve in there. Because we don't have any numbers, we really don't know if that is going to have a slight curve or not. But again, this is just an approximation. Now, another thing that some people do when they're drawing motion time curves is they do put in vertical lines. This drives my students nuts, and I'm glad it does because you notice that it is a discontinuous graph. You'll also notice that motion is, is theoretically, it's impossible. No, you can't go from just zero velocity up to some positive velocity, but we're just going to represent uh, uh, that motion. We all know there actually would be a slight curve here, but for right now, because we're just getting the idea of this, that's okay. Now here, we're at zero slope. Now my little hiker man starts coming down and it's getting steeper and steeper and steeper. The whole time from here to the end, the slope is negative. However, it starts out as zero and it's getting more and more and more negative all the way to the end. Now, a lot of times when you go for, to draw the velocity time graph, many of my students will kind of draw the same thing. Remember, it's not the same thing. Your velocity is just the slope of that position curve. And when now when we look at the velocity curve in terms of what velocity means, it makes sense. Okay, the ladybug starts out at zero velocity. When you throw her, as soon as she leaves your hand, she has a very high positive velocity because she's going up. But then she's getting slower and slower and slower and her velocity approaches zero as she gets to that maximum point. Once she gets to that maximum point, she has a small velocity, but it's going down. Remember, positives and negatives when we're dealing with vectors simply indicate direction. That's all they represent. And now her velocity gets higher and higher and higher and higher until she gets squished, until she falls gently back into your hand. To do the acceleration curve, we're just doing 
the exact same thing. Now you can see the bottom of my board here. But okay, so from here, I don't like how that's thicker than the rest of it. So we're doing the exact same thing, but now we're looking at our velocity curve. So the velocity curve from here to here has a zero slope. From here to here, it's a negative slope, but it's the same negative slope. The slope is not changing from here to here at all. And if you notice, the slope actually stays the same and negative all the way to the end. So it is the same number, negative. This is what our acceleration, oh, can you see that? This is what our acceleration curve would look like. So there you go. We went from a position curve to a velocity curve to an acceleration curve. Don't ever make it more complicated than that. Post your questions below and subscribe today. Make it a good one.